Hey, homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. Today, I'm doing kind of a fun experiment. There was a lot of videos and various other things floating around this summer on making apple scrap vinegar. And I have made vinegar in the past. I have a whole blog post on it, but I had never done it with apple scraps. And the thing with vinegar is it's a two-step process. The thing that actually converts to vinegar is alcohol. And so basically you need to take a sugary fruit solution, turn that into alcohol, and then from there have that alcohol turn into vinegar. And so the one time that I tried to make vinegar when I didn't know anything about making vinegar, um, the problem that I had with it was that it wasn't converting to alcohol and so it was kind of a mess. And so I didn't really think that process would work. And then I saw all these things about apple scrap vinegar, and we were processing the last of our apples over the winter. And I thought, you know, it's worth giving that another try. And so the, I'm not going to go through, I didn't show the part of the video where I actually made the apple scrap vinegar, but basically you take all of your peels and your cores and you put them in a jar and then you cover them with water that for each cup of water, you have a tablespoon of sugar dissolved in it. And that gives a little bit of extra food for that fruit. Uh, and then you just let it sit with something like a coffee filter over it to keep fruit flies out. And it, over the course of a week, it ferments and gets very bubbly. And so that is the process of turning the sugars that are in there into an alcohol. And then from there, you strain it off and then let it continue to sit for at least up to another month. And that alcohol will then turn to vinegar. And this is all relying on natural bacteria that are just in the environment. So it can definitely go south. What I did once I had strained out the scraps I took, I think, probably a couple tablespoons of Bragg's apple cider vinegar, and I put it in my filtered apple scrap mixture in order to basically inoculate it with the right guys that I wanted it to turn into vinegar. This still has the mother. It's unpasteurized, which means that all of those... Um, bacterial good guys that are supposed to be in vinegar are still in here. It's active. You can also use this to just start your own batch of vinegar, and I'm going to do that today as well, so I'll show you that. Anyway, so I did inoculate after my initial ferment with some of this just so that the good guys would be in here, and this is what I'm left with. So let's see. Uh, I started this on the 1st of January. Um, on the 11th of January, I filtered it, and I probably could have filtered it a little bit sooner, but you know, life. And then it's been sitting today is the 22nd or 23rd of February. So this has been sitting for a month and a half or so. And I think it's about done. There's a pretty nice mother on there. I'm going to go ahead and filter it and just see what I get. But the really fun part of this experiment is I happen to have a pH meter. And it's because of what I do as my other job, which is I have a commercial kitchen and I make jams and jellies and um, toiletry products and other things. And I also have a background in science. I have a degree in biology. And so I thought it would be really fun to actually measure the pH of our apple cider vinegar, scrap vinegar, along with the pH of actual commercial apple cider vinegar. Commercial apple cider vinegar has been standardized to 5% acidity. And so we'll see what the pH of this is, and then we'll see what the pH of this is. The, the reason you want to do that is because if this is less acidic than standard vinegar, it's not something you would want to pickle with. It might be fine for salads and things like that, but it's not something you would want to use for food preservation because you simply don't know what the pH is. Um, and it, that's going to vary. So your mileage may vary. This may turn out to be super perfect and really acidic. That doesn't necessarily mean that your batch would be perfectly acidic because it's going to depend on the apples you started with, how much water you added, how much sugar you added, um, how long it fermented for, whether you stood on one foot and held your tongue in the right place. It's an incredibly variable process. But I just thought I'd show you just because I thought it would be fun. So my hands are clean. What you see floating in the top of this, and hopefully you can see that kind of floating there. If you've ever made kombucha, it is not dissimilar. This is the mother. And so when this talks about with the mother, that's actually what they're talking about. This bacterial um, community will form a mat that floats on the surface and creates this funny jelly-like, it's like the blob. And so I'm literally just gonna reach in here and fish this out with my hand. Thankfully, this is a wide mouth jar. And there it is. So check this out. It's basically a community of bacteria. 
and it's formed its own little mat. This looks moldy when you first glance at it. This is not mold. This is actually the bacterial mother. Um, so super fun. And if I smell that, definitely smells like vinegar. And then I'm gonna just run this through a filter. I've got a fine mesh filter here and then a coffee filter. You can see I have a lot of sediment in the bottom of this. And some of that is fine, but I would prefer to not have all of that in my vinegar. And so I'm just gonna see how clean I can get this before I actually test the pH. I like using a fine mesh strainer and then a coffee filter just because this fine mesh strainer is gonna catch a lot more of the chunky stuff, which is gonna mean that that coffee filter is gonna clog up a lot less quickly than it would if we just started. And I will probably just try to really carefully pour this and leave some of that sediment in the bottom and just not even try to filter it. All right, I'm just gonna stop there. Ooh, that definitely smells like vinegar. And you can see we are filtering, it's just slow. The trick to this is always finding a container that is gonna sit high enough that your liquid isn't just gonna sit and not actually drain out, which is tricky. So we'll give this a minute to finish straining and I'll bring you back. So most of it is drained. There's a little bit over here that hasn't, but I don't have the patience to wait because that's who I am. And this pH meter has already been calibrated. I'm gonna put our apple scrap vinegar in that. And then I'm gonna put our regular store-bought apple cider vinegar in the other side. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but when you're buying apple cider vinegar, look at the ingredients, because there's a lot of quote apple cider vinegars out there that aren't actually apple cider vinegar. They are white distilled vinegar with caramel color added. And so what you wanna see is apple cider vinegar diluted with water to 5% acidity. You do not wanna see you know, apple flavored. Um, and so it's it's very tricky. And actually the, the big brands like Heinz will do that. So look at your cider vinegars when you're buying them at the store, make sure that they are indeed what they say they are and not just caramel color. Okay, so this pH meter has been calibrated. I did that before I turned the camera on. I'm just gonna rinse it in, I don't have distilled water, but this is filtered reverse osmosis water, so it's gonna get us close. I need to dry off our probe. Turn this on. Okay, mix this around. Make sure that probe doesn't have an air bubble and that it's good and saturated. And what we are showing here, you guys probably can't see that, is a pH of 3.2. I'm gonna rinse this. Make sure we're not contaminating, cross-contaminating our samples. And then let's see what our, so our standard apple cider vinegar is showing 3.0. Interesting, so slightly more acidic. The thing about the pH scale is that pH is logarithmic, which means the difference between three and four is not one, it's 10. And so the difference between three and five is 100, and the difference between three and six is 1,000. So if you were to graph it, I'll put a logarithmic scale on the screen, um, it continues to go sharper and sharper up. So the difference between 3.0 and 3.2 is not insignificant, but this is pretty acidic. It's, it's, I wouldn't can with it, but it's actually considerably better than I was anticipating, so that's pretty cool. So 3.0 for our standard apple cider vinegar. And what I'm gonna do just for curiosity's sake is I have some white vinegar. It should be the same as the apple cider vinegar. They should both come out at 3.0 because they've both been standardized to 5% acidity. Let me pour this out and reset it because right now I have water and calibration solution in here. All right, so this is standard white vinegar. Oh, interesting. White vinegar, surprisingly more acidic. Who knew? That's really interesting. 
And this is actually more the reading I was expecting. If you Google what's the pH of vinegar, 2.4 is typically the range that you get. And then I, just for fun, this is um, rice wine vinegar. And rice wine vinegar, people don't realize this, rice wine vinegar is standardized to 4.3 acidity. It is not 5. And so you cannot equally exchange rice wine vinegar for other types of vinegars if you're canning. Um, a lot of people don't realize that rice wine vinegar is less acidic. But just out of curiosity, let's see what the pH of that is since we're here. Rinse one more time here. And if I were in a lab, the procedures I'm using would not be identical. They'd be close, but I'm just, this is just for fun. So I'm not worried about incredible detailed accuracy here. You do want to give everything a good stir. All right, so rice wine is pH of 2.8. Interesting. Okay, so there you have it. Interesting results of the pH of different vinegars using an actual pH meter that has been calibrated. But our apple scrap vinegar is 3.2, not bad. Not super fruity, just because we did dilute a lot of that fruit with water when we made it. I'm guessing flavor-wise, it's a little more like you mixed half apple cider vinegar and half white vinegar. Probably not quite as strong um, flavor-wise, fruity-wise, as you would get if you were using actual cider vinegar that was made with apple juice, which is not what you do with apple scrap vinegar. Apple scrap vinegar, you're just kind of relying on whatever's left in there to come out into the liquid. Um, if you taste it, you know, it tastes vinegary. It doesn't taste great. It's not super exciting, um, but certainly a great way to use something that would otherwise just be thrown out. Um, and I did end up, when I filtered out the scraps, I threw those to the chickens. So literally nothing went to waste. And I have some vinegar that I can use for other things. It would also be good for cleaning. You know, that recipe for taking orange peels and soaking them in vinegar and then putting that in a spray bottle and using it for cleaning. This would be a great use for that. It would be really great for cleaning. I almost forgot to show you this part. I'm gonna start a batch of red wine vinegar. And this is just a bottle of red wine that wasn't total garbage, but it was on, on sale for $7 at my grocery store. And I bought this several months ago. This is the greatest wine opener ever. I've never seen them online. It was something that Chase Bank gave out as a bonus for somebody opening an account, and my father-in-law had it, and we ended up with it, and I love these things. It's an awesome wine opener, sorry, complete side. So all I'm gonna do here is pour this into our cleaned jar that we were using earlier. And the wine bottle I think is 750 milliliters which is a pint and a half, a little over that. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our mother from our previous vinegar, and I'm just gonna transfer it to this jar, and we will keep going. There we go. And then same as before, just to ensure, although I probably don't need to do this at this point, give this a good shake. I'm gonna add this as a starter culture. And we will make some red wine vinegar for making pickled red onions and things like that from this inexpensive bottle of wine. Kind of fun. So there you go, just a fun experiment. Thanks for watching, Tribe. I have new videos coming out every week. If you like this kind of thing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment.